Okay. So what we have here is 16th inch steel. Um, camera doesn't want to work because there's a shiny, you know, there's an edge on these, right? Let me show you what a flat surface. There we go. 16th inch steel. Um, you can use 16th or you can use 18th on these steel tips. Um, I'm using 16th because that's what I found. And it was just a piece of steel metal off of a dresser. And I'm getting some good sparks on it. It's good steel. Um, so I'm basically going to show you how to shape these up. Basically, we're going to shape them up. I'm just kind of uniforming the uh, backs on them with just a slight angle this direction, a slight angle that way. And then I just kind of curve them over and sand out these edges so there's no sharp edges. When I, when I go to put it into the uh, arrow, okay, it's just, it's not sharp. You understand what I'm saying? It's still flat, but it's got a slight bevel to clean it up and make it look uniform. Um, obviously, on the, the cutting edge, we're doing like a 30 degree angles, like that. That. Okay, and then you just bring the line to the center, and you get a perfect sharpened edge. Okay, so let me go ahead and do one. I'll show you what it's. It's not very hard. So, so I got one in the vice grip. They do get hot. I like to use the edge. of the sander this allows me to get that that cutting edge on there hold on one second we gotta make sure it's level that's how you want to start your your cutting edge. You want it completely flat and level. You don't want any big divots or anything like that. Then you come over and start your cutting edge. That's kind of what you want to see. You flip it over and do the other side. And as you can tell, it don't take very long. Put a cutting edge on it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is flip it back over. We're gonna hold it for about five seconds, 10 seconds. Check both sides. Okay. Got perfect 30 degree angles. That's gonna make it really sharp. We're gonna do the other side. And uh, we're gonna test these bad boys. We're gonna mount these to the arrows. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Hey guys, so I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to prepare these hunting points. You can see where I'm attaching the tip with the drill bit. You're going to drill a hole there and drill a hole there. You're going to leave space, a gap in the center for the shaft to come up. 
and then you're gonna you're gonna basically drill this hole and then this hole and that's gonna allow the securing to the shaft okay right here I've started one of the shafts I'm gonna show you how I start the gluing process but first you need to you need to pay attention to right here see the shaft you can see how I taper the ends down so there's a smooth transition as the shaft enters the cavity or the body of the animal that you're shooting at okay the reason why you want this smooth shaft is because if you have a big round shaft it creates like a block on the end here and it stops the arrow from penetrating so you want that almost I wouldn't say paper thin but you want it pretty thin and let's look at this one I'll show you like you can't even see the end here because of the glue line if I was to knock some of that glue back you can see it's a really thin transition going in to the arrow okay now obviously I've started the gluing process on this one and I already have the holes drilled you can see one of the holes there I'm just gonna knock those holes back out as soon as this thing dries and from there um, I'm gonna take these small strips of sinew I take so basically I cut a piece off of this artificial sinew and then I separate it into four smaller pieces and these are going to be what what I use to secure the arrow through the holes to the shaft and then it's going to run down it's going to loop across back under back up over back up over back under and then it's going to spin right here and I'll show you that process here in a minute but um, this is how I secure the arrows points the hunting points to the shaft take a little, little block or a small hammer and you just kind of tap it down until it opens up and it'll split like that and <clears throat> just take take your sharpened um, your steel point with your two holes drilled this had a big hole in it when I first made it so that's not I put that hole in. And you just take it and right before you put the point in, you go ahead and add some glue and you want to run it down that that split. So just give a little bit of glue. Like that. And you run it down the split. Gonna work it down a little bit. So I got glue in the split. So like that. And once I got glue in the split, I'm gonna line up. I'm just gonna line up my tip so it's straight with the arrow. Now, you can do it like this. You just hold that arrow straight up. You'll see if the, if the uh, point 
is spinning evenly. You can also do it like this. And it is, it's spinning completely evenly. Now I'm just going to take some of that glue right in. My fingertips. And we're going to start. I'm going to start a sinew. And I'm just going to thread it through one of the holes that I drew. A little bit, go through the second hole, that started, I'm going to take this little bitty piece that I started right there and make sure this comes over the top. Take it and loop it down and around this direction and back up. Okay. And I'm gonna go back through the hole. And this time I'm gonna take it straight across the other hole. That way, I have a loop on here, and it'll cinch up on this piece of wood. See right there, boom. It's gonna lock this thing in. And we'll take it back down at an angle, under, back around, and back up. I'm gonna run it through this big hole since I got a hole. around and I'm going to start my twist right here. You see I'm running a twist kind of like you would a uh, serving. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. I'm going to run it back up towards the actual blade. Hold it. I'll hold it tight with my fingers. I'm get some glue. I'm just gonna glue this thing up. This is how I do it. And it's kind of messy. But I'm just gonna take the glue. I'm gonna saturate everything. I'm gonna size the tips, the holes, the string. The same and everything. I'm gonna take some of this glue from this side. I'm gonna run it over here. My excess over here. And then I'm gonna run it around. Run down that extra uh, sinew. And get it nice and sticky and wet. You can use wood glue or you can use super glue. Super glue is a lot faster. Uh, I like wood glue because you don't glue your fingers together. Uh, it's a little easier in my opinion. Now I'm going to take a small drop of glue. I'll put one drop there, one drop there. And what this does is locks it in all that sinew and it also protects the arrow right there where you might have a shave the wood down a little bit it's going to seal that wood in okay now notice the, the sinew came is stuck up right just take it stick it back down and you're going to run another bead of glue now, as you work with wood glue, five, ten minutes, 
it's gonna get, start getting real sticky. Everything's gonna come together. Nice and sticky. I'm gonna run that glue down a little bit. Kind of coat this uh, air a little bit. Just like that. And the whole time I'm just pulling this piece of, piece of sinew back over. I'm just kind of laying it down right there. And then all my excess, I'm just gonna run it down the air shaft. So we can protect this glue right. When you work that wood down to fit this thing in there for the transition, it uh it kind of damages the actual arrow shaft a little bit. Now I'm just gonna clean it up with my thumbs and it's finished. That's it. Now we just let it dry and then we can put it in our quiver. It's ready to go. Okay guys, so <clears throat> Now to tear it out, we're going to do a final draw weight. This thing's been curing for about a week. And I've had to uh, add carbon and fiber to the handle to make it more static. I added an arrow rest with a notch uh, to make it more accurate. That's what I've done to the bow. And it's added some draw weight. So we're going to test it and see... Um, it's doing really well to tear it out. I'm going to attempt to pull it to 16 inches. That's 30 pounds at 14 inches. So, with that calculation, that gives us a good calculation. 30 pounds at 14 inches. That's really heavy. Um, at 16 inches, it's going to be 34 pounds. At 18 inches, it's going to be almost 40. So, there it is. And the reason why I know that is because it's a shorter bow, and every inch per square inch per pound should bump two pounds roughly. So, it'll go from 30, 32 at 15, 34 at 16. 36 at 17, 38 pounds at 18, and it will be roughly 40 pounds at 18 and a half, or 18 or 19 pounds, so, or 19 inches, excuse me, and this bow is only meant to be drawn at 16 to 18 inches, um, so I know I'm hitting that 40 pound range, that makes it a legal bow, yay! Legal bow, 30 pounds at 14. Very good. <clears throat> okay guys, so I wanted to show you what I did to the bow. We carbon wrap, carbon fiber wrap the handle to make it more static. So it would bend less and it improved the draw weight to the bow. It went from like I don't know, we added five or ten pounds to it. So I was shooting around 30 pounds at 16. Now it's shooting 35 closer to 40. And as long as I'm pulling past that 16 mark, I know I'm hitting in the 40 plus range. Which is a legal hunting range. So anyways, uh, in the process I had to repaint this area and I redid the epoxy today we are using the steel points that we made earlier in the video we have them sharpened up and we're gonna test them out on that pumpkin right there you can barely see the pumpkin we are 10 or 15 yards away from the target and we're gonna do an accurate uh, penetration test with these, these points this pumpkin is really hard and I'll show you the pumpkin here in a minute it's a really hard pumpkin. It has lots of, uh, you know, like weird growth warts on it and stuff. It's super hard. It, to me, this would be a really accurate test for any kind of point, whether it be a steel point or, uh, uh, you know, a napped stone point or anything like that. I don't have any napped stone points, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. But I want to show you all what this thing can do as far as penetration 
to an animal or a pumpkin, a really hard pumpkin. This pumpkin hasn't been uh, carved yet and it's very fresh and it has a really thick, thick, thick skull. Well, not skull, but a hull to it, the outer core. Anyways, um, I'm going to take a few uh, practice shots and y'all are going to get to see what it does to the tree. I'm going to use the practice points first and then I'm going to be shooting into the pumpkin and we're, we're going to pull out the, the arrows and we're going to measure the penetration on the arrow inside the pumpkin. Here we go. So the points held up well. The points went into trees. They didn't really take a bend. It took a slight bend, just a very small bend, but it was fixable. The points held up well. What didn't hold up was the wood glue. The wood glue on the sinew, as soon as it got wet, it got soft and it came apart. So that's what happened. We're going to try it with CA glue. We got some CA glue here. Just some good old super glue. And uh, we're going to redo it. We're going to redo this test. Okay, so as you can see, my groupings are getting better. We're almost on target. Target was right here. On the tree, we have three just to the right. We're talking about two to three inches to the right. One a little bit low, and I had one low down there. I didn't pull a full draw on that bottom. One. These were all full draws, and they went right where I was shooting, uh, within a foot. And that's pretty good. I'm gonna take a couple more practice shots, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a shot at the pumpkin with the steel points. All right, guys. So it took me about three or four hours, but I redid the tips. I uh, glued them up with CA glue. We shouldn't have the problems we had earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and take a few shots of this thing. We'll see what kind of penetration we get. Not sure what happened there, but okay. Starting to think this Jacqueline is cursed. All right, we got one end of the pumpkin. Let's see how deep it went. About 
two or three inches. Uh, is that a good test? I don't know, man. I was thinking it would, it would penetrate a lot deeper than that. This is a really thick pumpkin. Um, I had two arrows bounce off the side of this thing. I mean, this, this thing is sticking hard, so I don't know. This pumpkin may not be a good um, testing, testing, you know, for a penetration on an animal. The animal's gonna be quite a bit softer than this guy. But anyways, we're gonna take a few more shots. Very good. Not that much went in. Anyways, um, I don't know what's going on. Maybe this pumpkin is tougher than an animal. <laughs> well, guys, uh, Final conclusion, maybe a lumpy skin pumpkin isn't a good, <laughs> maybe it's not a good penetration test. Um, I know that animal skin and hide, muscle tissue, organs, those kinds of things are probably five to ten times softer than the outer hull of that pumpkin. I guess if I want to do a true penetration test, I probably should use an actual animal or something like that. Because I don't think that was a true true depiction. Now, take in mind, I'm shooting a 35 pound bow to 40 pound bow. That's the bare minimum I would use to hunt with. Um, I'm not sure I still feel confident even hunting with it. I don't. I don't think I do. But um, I'm getting more accurate with it. I feel comfortable there. Um, but as far as strength and power and performance, I'm not sure 40 is going to do it. I'm going to have to practice shooting this bow at a full draw, which is probably 18 inches. And that's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be sketchy and tricky and, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.